Well, good morning and welcome back to City Line. With me, I have uh, two guardians of the port, I'm going to call them today, because when the port of Tacoma turns 100, you know it doesn't happen by itself. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Rod Kuhn. You are the Senior Manager of Communications for the Port of Tacoma. Welcome back. Good to be here. Last time I had you, you were here talking about, we were just starting to just kind of tap into and unravel some of the things that were going to happen to celebrate this year. So I said, come back and here you are. So you are a man of your word. Thank you. And you brought a friend, Mr. Don Meyer, who we all know is a Port of Tacoma commissioner. Welcome, Don. Good morning, Amanda. Good to Happy have, to be here. Good to have you here. Now, those are some very nice socks you have on right there, Mr. Mister. Yeah. I don't know if we can get you in the sock cam. Oh, is that second. right? Uh, uh, it's important that I be raise, dressed right. Raise your foot up. Just a there you go. Oh, still. There's my socks. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> there. Ta-da. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, yeah. We, we're always in the mood for a good pair of socks. Yeah, so, yeah, that's that's right. Right. so now that I've embarrassed him thoroughly, let's go to you, Rod. Back okay. to you, Rod. Okay. Um, let's talk about, um, let's get a little retrospect or a little history on this Port of Tacoma. And you would think I wouldn't have to say that, but um, most people don't have access to some of the fun pictures we're going to see that date back with the 100-year anniversary. So what was shipping and the working waterfront like in the early 1900s? Well, a lot of it, when the railroad came in 18, uh, announced they'd chosen Tacoma as the western terminus, a lot of the waterfront uh, in downtown was owned by the railroad. So the port was established by a vote of Pierce County citizens. Here's some uh, shots at Pier 1, Pier 2. That particular one's from about the 1930s. The earlier photo was of a crane. This was called a jitney train. So this was really the, the first decade the port uh, operated. The first ship came in in 1921. Mm. So that's a, a, longshore, a longshoreman doing his job, um, moving cargo. Uh, it's much different today, but still, Isn't it though? still trying to move it efficiently and effectively. It is in that same water that occurred. I'm like, that's the same water. Some things don't change. That's the same water. Very true. So let's, let's talk about, we've got a great video here. We've got a 45 second video clip and it shows, uh, looks like Pier 2 in the 1920s. So we're going to roll that. Um, and I'm going to have you just kind of talk over it. This is a, a warehouse at Pier 2 and this is actually an um, elevated monorail system that, again, Longshore operated it, and it moved, in this case, lumber that was in the warehouse. It operated on a loop, and it would bring it out from the warehouse and put it ship side, where Longshoremen would load the cargo on the ship. And, of course, works the other way when cargo came off the ship. You can see a classic, uh, I don't know if that's a Model A or Model T there. Hey, look at that. So... There were six different cranes, um, and again, a longshoreman working each one of them. And that was how we tried to get more efficient and speedier at moving cargo. That was a marketing film that was done, I think, around 1925. I was going to say, how on earth did you find that gem of a video? Well, of course, video is the wrong term, right? Yeah, it's but, not what I mean. <clears throat> yeah, it, was, it is incredible. 16-millimeter film that was actually in a safe uh, in the finance department. on silver. Of course. On silver nitrate film. It's, so, always, it's always that finance yeah. department. you got to watch them, don't yeah, you? Yeah, they know? save everything. Yeah, they save everything. So um, let's talk about um, when you were on our show in July, we talked about the scale model mm -hmm. Um, at your centennial, the centennial container. Um, so how has that been used in the celebration? It's been one of our most fun uh, parts of the celebration. We debuted it at the, our annual boat tours. Mm -hmm. This is a 20 foot shipping container with four doors on it. So people could walk through it. Uh, it was at the Puyallup Fair. Here's a photo of some visitors there. Yes. So this was another public event. We moved it around to different locations from the Foss Waterway Seaport, the Puyallup Fair. Um, and then we also did 12 large uh, timeline panels that, that are shown here. They were on display at the Foss Waterway Seaport. Currently, they're at the Port of Tacoma Office Building. But it's decade by decade uh, highlights of both the Port of Tacoma 
as well as some historical information about things like the top of the mm -hmm. ocean and when President Kennedy was at Sheeney Stadium and, and things that uh, we hope to connect with the Good public on wise. as well. So Don, I want to hear here in just a second about how the port commissioners have played a role in this. But first I want to find out what events do you want to highlight before we get to Don? Uh, we just did the Destiny Dinner. We be, yeah. uh, the port was a, a leading sponsor in that, of course, is a Tacoma Historical Society event. And we debuted a historical video. Uh, this is our, the logo that we worked with Jay Ray to develop that. Oh, our slogan, so our ties run deep. So on November 5th, which is our actual anniversary date, we will uh, post that video that was just uh, shown recently. Fabulous. So that's one of the main things coming up. And the Destiny Dinner was really our... It always is. Quite an event. It's just like one of those out of the yep. park moments. It really is. So Don, for people who don't know, first off, two questions kind of in one here. Tell us how the port of Tacoma is structured and then tell us what role the commissioners are going to play in this big anniversary. Thank you, Amanda, for that question because I'd like to first of all start with the thank you. We, we are celebrating our 100th anniversary and I want to say thank you to the, the voters who basically established this and what's more important from my perspective is the continued support the citizens provide to the Port of Tacoma and the role it plays as an economic development engine. Mm -hmm. In terms of how we're structured, uh, there's five uh, port commissioners. I'm one of five. We are elected officials. Uh, we serve on a countywide basis for four years our, as our term in, in a nonpartisan way. We act as a board of directors, basically. We approve budgets, which a uh, key part of that is setting the property tax levy. We are running a subsidized public business. And we set the policies. We approve long-term leases. And of course now, uh, one of the new things we have is, is that we are actually in a cooperative arrangement with the Port of Seattle. We call it the Northwest Seaport Alliance. So you serve as a port commissioner at the Port of Tacoma as a part of that alliance. Wonderful. Yeah. Port. So that's kind of the role and response. We act like a board of directors, the five of yeah, us. Yeah, but that's beautiful transparency and inclusiveness there with Seattle. I love that because, again, it's the same water. Okay? Yes. So let's talk about some of the major accomplishments, Don, um, and milestones that uh, has happened during the years at the port. And we have some pictures we're going to show also. Yeah. I think uh, when I look, reflect my time at the port in the 80s and 90s, I was staff at the port at Tacoma. And one of the things that we uh, pioneered was the on-dock intermodal yard. We, this is the rail connection where you can move containers quickly from the ship through the container yard and then onto the rail. We pioneered that at the port of Tacoma. And, as, and also one of the things that we uh, had uh, and it occurred was the uh, signing of the Puyallup land claim settlement. And what you mm -hmm. see here is pictures of the Blair Waterway uh, this is a very narrow bridge. Car ships had a very difficult time uh, going through here. As a part of the Puyallup land claim settlement was the removal of this bridge. What that did is allowed the Port of Tacoma up the Blair Waterway, which the major, what you see here is the president signing the Puyallup land claim settlement. But that bridge, when it was removed as a part of that uh, settlement process, unlocked the Blair Waterway where we moved from a couple hundred thousand containers a year to over two million. Wow. That's the significance of that. And so that cable stay bridge was a part of the road around. Uh, and uh, so that was was really a game changer for us. And thus uh, much more commerce coming through that port it, as well. Tremendous impact uh, for us. Not not just for us, but also for the Everybody. Gulf tribe. It Everybody made, benefited. The ripple effect, more jobs, more everything. It was a win-win uh, deal and uh, no question about that. So um, you've got, because I mean, your background is so amazing when you say that you were employed and now you're, you're a port commissioner. What a beautiful evolution to get a, a big, big picture. So what are some of the challenges facing the port today? I, I think that th there are several challenges, not the least of which is infrastructure. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I could talk about that in, uh, quickly uh, in the context of ships are getting larger, so we need uh, uh, more investments. Uh, in fact, our recent acquisition of container cranes allows us to service the largest vessels, 18,000 containers. Our average size is probably less than 10 at this stage of the game. And now we're gonna be having to service uh, 18,000 TEU vessels. So infrastructure in terms of uh, right-sizing our terminals, but also 
One important ingredient is completing, for example, our roadway extension of 167 mm -hmm. and completing that into the Port of Tacoma is fundamentally important. We're yeah. a, very much a discretionary port. I think that also a land use planning, without a question, one of the most significant things we have in front of us, and it's quite interesting, we just are starting a process working with the city of Tacoma, Puyallup Tribe, and, uh, and city of Fife and Pierce County on land use planning and looking at the Tide Flats area in, in the context of what does that future look like? What do we want to really promote as policies? Yes. And yes. Uh, some of it's wrapped around the whole issue of fossil oh. fuels uh, and, and variety of other things. So I think land use planning, and then you know ultimately, I think another big piece of, of uh, where we're going and where we need to go is the unprecedented competition that we're now find ourselves in. Absolutely. Canada has done an excellent job of combining their rail mm -hmm. as well as taking advantage of their infrastructure. Uh, I read recently in a, in a Journal of Commerce article, there's as much as a $400 differential coming through Puget Sound to get to Chicago versus Canada. So all of and those are, are questions that we're gonna, we're gonna want answers on, Mr. because we're, we're short on time, but you've laid out some really important things for us to think about and not the next 100 years. Yeah. <laughs> Within the next, probably I'd say minimal is five years. So sooner would be great. So last question is, uh, when you think about how the port will in evolve and grow, What's the one thing you want to see? Just one thing in the next 100 years. I want to see the ability for the port to continue to be a working waterfront and Absolutely. the ability for incompatible uses to have buffer zones. Mm -hmm. Those to me are the, some of the most significant issues that we could ever face. Oh, there we go. Thank you, both of you. Thank you, man. Taking time out of your busy schedule and this busy year to be here. And I know that uh, November 5th is the big official birthday, but I want to say come on and come back some more because any information we get about the port is key because um, it is truly one of the tapestries of our lives of what goes on down there. So thank you for um, being such a great steward. And here's to the next 100 years when we won't be here, but we'll be a part of history. Very good. Thank Thanks you. for having us. You're Enjoyed welcome. it. Thank you. When we come back to Come a Musical Playhouse, uh, Family Theater will be in the house. You don't want to miss that. We'll be right back.